Hello and welcome to my weekly wrap-up and this is going to be the wrap-up for two weeks in fact from September 24th till October 7th so I read some very cool books and pretty much most of them were arcs which never happens and I'm so excited to share what I read in those two weeks to be completely honest, I'm usually not very good with finishing books by a certain deadline, that's why I try not to take on many arcs or, I don't know, I barely ever ask for them. I stopped doing that for a while back, so I'm not just not very good with, you know, keeping myself to a strict TBR, but this past two weeks I had to read and review some of the books and I actually made it all on time. And the first book that I read in those two weeks was The Uncrossing by Melissa Eastlake. This was an ARC copy for, provided to me by Entangled Teens, so thank you so much to them for that. I requested that book for review because once I read the synopsis, I thought that that book would be an exact thing that I wanted at the moment. And this is a standalone, as a matter of fact, it's a debut novel. This is a young adult urban fantasy, uh, magical mafia story, but it's also a Roman story between two boys who fall for each other against an existing curse and this book has both the elements of a fairy tale retelling, I'm not going to say which one, you'll have to guess, and also the, um, you know, elements of urban fantasy because the setting is in contemporary New York City, but we have magical families and the magic exists in this world. Um, we have very lovely, you know, budding relationship, first friendship and then romance in the story. This is a debut novel and I had a lot of mixed feelings about it. I gave the book 3.5 stars. I have a full non-spoilery, mostly, review on my blog and I'll provide the link down below. As well as I have an excerpt uh, thanks to Melissa Eastlake who provided me with it. So I have like a snippet from the actual novel on my blog, I'll put it there as well. This is um, an interesting story, I really like the premise, however I had some problems with the writing, it took me a while to get into the writing itself. Um, even though I did enjoy, I like the characters, even though I felt that some of the characters were not very well developed. Another problem that I had was uh, cul cultural representation in the story, because we have one family which, uh, which is Russian, and we have another family which is half Ukrainian. Um, there were some cultural elements in the story that I felt were not very well developed, or just not very well researched, most probably. So I had some problems with that. As you know, I tend to be overly critical when it comes to cul cultural appropriation, especially Eastern European culture. And even though I did not find as many problems with this book as I found, say, with the Crown's Game, even though I did enjoy Crown's Game and I own a copy of it, um, nevertheless, I just felt that the uh, the uncrossing had a very interesting premise, but the problem was, especially in the world building part, um, it, it lied in the fact that the author never fully disclosed the boundaries of the magic, and because of that, it was very difficult to tell, like, is it even possible in this world, or it's not possible? How's it happening? For me, the book picked up somewhere around 50-60% mark, which is not a very good sign, but the ending was interesting and I enjoyed it, and I have a feeling as if Melissa, like, she has a potential to write better stories. It's just, this was a debut novel, so I just assume it was kind of like the first baby. Then Crossing could have benefited for more heavy edits, and probably a bit more, you know, copy editing, but I still enjoyed it. It was fun. It was not a very, you know, uh, plot heavy, mostly I would say it's probably character driven story, but I did enjoy it. I give it 3.5 stars just because I feel that the story has a potential and the author has a potential. Please check out my review down below. Let me know what you think and it's definitely a fun book if you're a fan of any kind of queer romances and young adult stories. Um, I would not recommend it to someone who's a fan of urban fantasy, just because, like I said, I feel as if the fantasy part was not very well developed, but everything else was fun. And Crossing came out on October 2nd, and it's available right now. 
The next book that I read was the book that I actually requested for review and that was that very book that I approached the Entangled Teen Rep for months ago and I just could not wait to get my hands on. This was the book, uh, the arc of which I unfortunately missed at BookCon but I went ahead and asked for it. Um, and I got it, and I read it, and I bloody loved it. That was 27 Hours by Tristina Wright. So this is book number one in her trilogy, and I'm super excited about this fact because this means that we'll have more of this world and more of these characters. So the story is set on the moon. We have a sci-fi setting and lots of, lots of, lots of representation in this book. I cannot even tell you how much representation there is in this book. There are people of color, there are people of different uh, racial identities, gender identities, sexual orientations. Oh my god, just we have people with physical disabilities, with mental disabilities. Mo I'm, I'm speechless, like I've never read anything that would be so diverse in terms of the character representation. Oh my god, I loved that part of the book. But besides that, the the story itself is very solid. So we have several hubs that exist on this moon, but unfortunately the moon is plagued by this hideous creatures which are called gargoyles or chimeras. And those creatures are some are similar to lizards or dragons, others are just more hideous, more, you know, human-like. And the story starts with one of the hubs in which the main protagonist by the name of Rumor, he lives there, he trains, his father trains him to be part of some sort of militia, and then the hub is attacked. More so, it not just attacked, everyone is basically everything is crumbling down, everyone is dead, and Rumor is the only person who manages to escape the hub and this vicious attack, and he goes to another hub to inform people that there is another attack coming, and not just, you know, random attack, it is organized. I just, I, I don't even know what to say. This book has amazing characters, amazing character development, uh, we have uh, several very brave teenagers that are trying to save their homes and save their moon and the planet. Uh, the planet itself is alive and seems to have uh, some sort of voice. I don't want to say anything else because this book is definitely worth to check out. 27 Hours is a debut novel, however it reads like something written by a very mature author. It's packed with action. There is always something happening on the page. All the voices of the characters are very distinctive. There is just the narrative itself is so condensed and compact. There is barely a moment when I would be thinking like, oh, that's kind of boring or you know what, it's kind of lagging about. No, there is always something happening, um, usually something bad. And there is a lot of like, there are a lot of elements that just keep you on your toes as a reader. I loved that book. I read it even though I I was kind of rushing to finish it to post my review. I had a headache while reading the most of it and even that did not stop me because I just wanted to read it so damn much. But I also felt really sad because I was rushing through it and I really want to read it again. The fact that this is book number one in the trilogy makes me so happy. Not only the book ended with a cliffhanger, I just want to know what happens next because those characters and those jokes and just like, I just, just, ugh. I have a full non-spoiler review on my blog as well as a little fan art that I did after reading this book because I just liked it so damn much. I'm not an artist but I drew a picture of one of the chimeras because I just, I just, I just, 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 yes. Anyway, so it's a sci-fi with lots of representation. It's also own voices. So naturally, I gave that book five stars. To be completely honest, I would say probably the plot of the book was four stars because there were just some things that felt not, not as strong 
for me, maybe because it's a young adult, it's not an adult novel, but I would say probably the plot itself is four stars, but since the story is also very much character driven, not only just plot driven, um, I would give characters five stars and obviously this kind of representation really deserves an extra star, so five stars overall. This book that I read was also an arc that I got from Nat Galley, and to be completely honest, I'm still not sure how I got approved for it, because it just felt like such a mainstream book, and I never ever get mainstream stuff, and that was Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. And that book is, when I looked at the description of the book and I hit that request button, I was like, oh my god, this sounds like something that I would really enjoy reading. And I did. More so, I read that book in one go. This is not just the book. This is a long, one long poem. The whole book is written in verse. Um, mostly prose poetry. I feel that the plot is very easy to spoil, that's why I'm not going to say much, but the story is about a boy, about gun violence, about uh, race, about poverty, about gangs. This is a very impactful story. It's just once you start reading it, do not stop. Just keep going till you hit the very ending because just stopping and taking a break from it might make you lose the momentum. And this this story, this book has to be read in one go. This was the first book that I read by Jason Reynolds, but I know that he also wrote All American Boys that was kind of popular and I saw it mentioned a lot in kind of like diversity uh, recommendations. So yeah, definitely check this book out. It's it's a hard read on one hand, but you'll probably breeze through it because it's just not possible to put it down. And I gave this book five stars. I cannot wait to put my review on Nat Galley and other social media because definitely this book deserves it. It has a very alluring cover as well but the text itself, it's almost like an explosion, you know, it's just, it, it words after words after words, so if you think about something raw and gritty, um, but it's also very real, it's more of a young adult contemporary if you want me to kind of specify it, but it's just, I just loved it. So yeah, definitely, definitely check this one out. Five stars. And it's going to be available on October 17th. And the last book that I read in those two weeks was a graphic novel called Roughneck by Jeff Lemire. This is a graphic novel that I checked out from Overdrive a couple of months ago, but then I did not finish it because it was really hard to read and kind of forgot about it. So finally it got it, like it became available on Overdrive again and I checked it out and finally finished it. Thank goodness. That graphic novel um, is, well, first of all, it's a Canadian author, which is great. Um, and it's set in Canada. I believe it's set in Ontario. The problem that I had with it was um, that I did not really like the art style. It was just too coarse, too, you know, like kind of hard and um, all thick lines and very rough. Um, was not my favorite. This is the story about a brother and sister who come back together after years of being apart and they try to break the cycle of abusive violence that surrounds them. Um, the girl is uh, in an abusive relationship and she's pregnant and she's also hooked up on drugs. The guy drinks a lot. Uh, he used to be a hockey player but then disgraced himself. Um, he is prone to violence. It's just there is a lot of negativity in this story. On one hand, it's very realistic. I'll give it that. It's very much, you know, it can be any small town in any province or in any country. It, it can be any brother and any sister. It can be basically anyone who suffers from like violence and addiction and abuse and poverty, all of that. I believe those two characters are part of indigenous culture. However, the story itself is very generic. I did not find anything, you know, that would pull me into the story and say, hey, this is what makes the story stand out. There is um, like a bit of a mention of spirits, but not as much. 
I really expected more from this story. I gave the book three stars. Like, it wasn't bad, but there was just nothing in there in the plot. Everything was predictable. I couldn't even think of anything that would make me read this book or even recommend it to someone. I can definitely say if you want to check out a graphic novel by a Canadian illustrator, a Canadian author um, that has to do what is it's set in Canada. Um, I mean, there's bloody winter and hockey, like, yeah. But otherwise, I cannot really think of anything that would make the story really unique. So yeah, kind of on a fence about this one, but still gave it three stars, so it was a decent read. Okay, this is all that I read in those two weeks. I had a, quite a few intense reading days, so now I'm taking it easy. But since I'm away this upcoming weekend, uh, October 14th and 15th, I will be in Montreal for business. And yay, Montreal! But I won't have time to film, which means that my next reading wrap-up will come in two weeks, and that would be for October 8th to October 21st. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below if you want to read any of the books after my discussion. Please check out my reviews and I'll see you in two weeks. Bye! Well, actually, I will be here on this channel as per my usual schedule, but I mean, like, my reading wrap-up will be in two weeks. Um, yeah. So thank you so much for them. Oh my god. Don't worry about, um, two kind of... <sighs> Let's just say, I'm not very in love with the stomach ache. So we just had a Thanksgiving. I'm actually filming this on Thanksgiving. I made a huge dinner for my friends, which was amazing. I cooked a lot and I ate a lot. And now my stomach is just... It's just killing me because obviously I cannot eat that much turkey and gravy and mashed potatoes and salads and whatnot without any consequences. Damn you. Damn you. It definitely... <laughs>